What's going on guys? Welcome back. Moving on to the next topic in cost volume profit analysis. We're now going to talk about target profit. And target profit, very similar to break even. So hopefully you watched the videos before this because a lot of the concepts I covered there, I'm going to be bringing back over here. And as we did with break even, we're going to look at target profit from two perspectives. From the number of units that we have to sell to achieve a certain target profit and the sales that we have to get in order to get a certain target profit. And it's really going to come down to using that equation again. So profit equals revenue minus variable costs minus fixed costs. So what I'm going to do in this video is look at target profit from this perspective, from the number of units perspective. So what I'm going to do is introduce some variables like we did with break even. So let X be the number of units sold. Let's say S is going to be the selling price per unit. And let's say VC is going to be the variable or let's just put V actually. V is going to be the variable cost. Per unit. So taking these and incorporating them here, we'll have profit equals the selling price per unit times the number of units sold minus the total variable cost is going to be the variable cost per unit times the number of units sold. And then fixed cost doesn't depend on the number of units sold. So that's just going to be FC. Now, when we dealt with break even, that was happening when the profit was zero, right? So we would put a zero here, but now we're going to have a certain target profit. So instead of putting P here, I'm going to put TP for target profit. So what units do we have to sell to achieve this target profit over here? So it's not going to be zero like break even. There's going to be an actual number here now. And so like we did before, what we want to do is isolate for that X. So we're going to bring the fixed cost over. So we'll have the target profit plus the fixed cost equals the selling price per unit times the number of units times the variable cost per unit times the number of units. And if we want to isolate for that X, we could factor it out here, right? Because it's in both expressions. So we'd be left with S minus V. And then over here on the left side, we're still left with target profit plus the fixed cost. And then divide both sides by S minus V in order to isolate for that X. And so the final equation that you end up getting is the target profit plus the fixed cost over the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. And remember the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit, we can also represent that as the unit contribution margin. Right? So that there is the formula that you're going to run into when you're finding the number of units to sell to achieve a certain target profit. So the difference is between this and break even is just this target profit. Before it was just fixed costs over the unit contribution margin. Now it's the total profit plus the fixed cost over the unit contribution margin. Okay, so let's show how all of this works through an example. So let's say when a company sells 3000 units of a product, its income statement is below. And we have to find the number of units it must sell to achieve a profit of $107,600. So this question is a little bit unique because notice that we're given a different type of information versus the type of information we were given in previous questions. So notice that we're given the total amounts for a certain production level. So what we can actually do is we can find out what the selling price per unit is. We can find out what the variable cost per unit is going to be as well. By taking those figures and dividing them by the production level. So if the total sales is 105,000 when you sell 3,000 units of a product, well, 105,000 divided by 3,000 gives us 
So that's going to be the selling price per unit. If we do the same thing with the variable cost, so the total variable cost divided by the production level, that would give us $7 per unit for the variable cost per unit. And then from here, now that we have that, we can solve for the number of units. So we have x equals the number of units. That's going to be the variable we're going to solve for. And we know profit equals revenue minus variable costs minus fixed costs. So the profit that we're going for is 107,600. The revenue, we know it's going to be 35 times x times the number of units that we are selling. Right? That's what we're going to be solving for. Minus the variable cost per unit times the number of units, so 7x, that's going to be the total variable cost. And then notice the fixed costs, they don't change with the production level. So the fixed costs are going to be the same as they are here, right? So the fixed cost for selling 3,000 units is going to be the same as the fixed cost for selling 1,000 units or for selling no units or selling 10,000 units. It's always going to be constant. So that 66,000 is going to go right there. And when you solve for this, when you bring this negative 66,000 over, 107,600 plus 66,000, that would give us 173,600 on the left side. And then we'll have 35x minus 7x, which would give us 28x. And then divide both sides by 28 to isolate for that x, we would end up getting 6,200. So that's the number of units that we have to sell in order to achieve that profit of 107,600. So that was one way to do it. Now what if we were to do it this way? What if we were to use this formula and we were given this information the same way? So if we were to just plug stuff in, target profit, we know it's 107,600. The fixed cost is the 66,000. And then we would have to get the unit contribution margin. And you could get that in two ways. You could take the, you could find the selling price per unit, the variable cost per unit, and then subtract them. So 35 minus seven, that gives us 28. Another way you could get that is taking the total contribution margin of 84,000, dividing it by the production level of 3,000. That would also give you 28. And when you do that calculation, you would end up getting that same figure of 6,200. Right, so two different ways to do it. I personally like to do it the first way because I don't like to memorize too many formulas, even though this may be a little bit faster. In the end, understanding everything is gonna give you more speed on a test versus memorizing stuff. So maybe uh, you could use this formula, but the first couple of questions that you do for target profit for break even, do it both ways, the formula way and the long way, just so you understand how that formula is actually being used. But either way, you get that value of 6,200. Now, a good segue actually is uh, into the next video. We're gonna be talking about the sales to achieve a certain target profit. So that's called target sales. And we could actually figure out what the target sales are from this example. It would be the number of units that we saw for times that selling price per unit, which was 35, which we solve for as well. And when you do that in the calculator, you would end up getting 217,000. So that there is the target sales. The target sales is basically the amount of sales that you have to make in order to achieve a certain target profit. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about this here, how to get that more directly. Right? So if you remember with break even, we showed it with the number of units and the sales number. Same thing with target profit, showing it with the number of units, which I just did in this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to get this number, the target sales, directly.